Yeah. Oh, there's a giant. Let's go. Come up. Hey. What's up? What a gorgeous day. The sun's shining. The birds are singing joyfully, playfully. You are so sweet. I could just eat you up. I believe we can seize this future together. Hi, everybody, and welcome to NSS. This is the Reynolds Report. 78-year-old Harrison Ford will be grabbing his whip and ramming on his hat for a fifth and supposedly final Indiana Jones movie. Disney made the announcement in a virtual presentation to investors on the weekend. The film, a mere 41 years after the first installment, is due for release in July 2022. Disney also unveiled plans for 10 new Star Wars and Marvel movies slated for Disney+. Stephen Colbert was down under recently and got a chance to sit down with Academy Award-winning director of Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson. Hey, welcome back to Return to New Zealand, a magical land where hugs still happen. As I casually mentioned earlier, while I was in New Zealand, I got to spend time filming a movie trailer with Academy Award-winning writer-director Sir Peter Jackson, close friend of mine. I stayed at his house. We had dinner in the original Bag End, no big deal. It's on his property. I don't want to make you think I spent my whole time running around nerding out over the Lord of the Rings. I spent plenty of my time sitting down nerding out over the Lord of the Rings. So here is never-before-seen footage from that rare interview with Sir Peter. Thanks so much uh, for having us down here to your studio. Yeah, you're very welcome. Now, where are we? What, what is this actual space we're in right now? Uh, well, this is, this is a secret location somewhere in New Zealand. Right, got that. Uh, there's no GPS tracking. Uh, nope. Uh, happened here. Mm -hmm. All of it's our phones have been confiscated. Somewhere, somewhere in New Zealand that uh, houses our, our um, miniatures, Mo most of them are from Lord of the Rings. So m most yeah. of these are getting on for 20 years old. You're a self-taught filmmaker. You started your career making low-budget horror movies like um, Dead Alive. Mm. How did, how, what was the transition from that? to, you know, a uh, acclaimed Oscar-winning director? Um, the transition was I, I um, well, Fran was, Fran, my partner, was interested in a, in a New Zealand murder case that happened in the 1950s, and she was, and so I started to research it with her, and that became Heavenly Creatures, which is Kate Winslet's first film. And then after that, we did The Frighteners. So The Frighteners was a, was a very early CGI film, and we, well, we had about 30 computers. And so when that film finished, we were still paying these bills. And, we, and so we, what can we do to keep these 30 computers going? So mm -hmm. I thought, well, one of those fantasy films, but with CGI creatures, because Jurassic Park was coming out, and we had the, the computers to do it. And so eventually, we, we just wondered who had the rights to Lord of the Rings. Since I've got you, I've got a few questions about the Lord of the Rings. Yep. I imagine you have. Oh, no. All right. <clears throat> this oh, is no. just for the Fellowship of the Ring. Here we go. Oh, just for the Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. All right. What was the first CGI thing that you created for Lord of the Rings? I knew I had to do battle scenes. We have huge mm -hmm. battle scenes. And in, in Hollywood films, even though you, know, you, know, you sort of see these big spectacular epics, when it, when it gets to big crowds, there's really only like, you know, maybe at the most a thousand people, two thousand people. And, and I mean, I mean, Tolkien writes about Helm's Deep, it's like 10,000 Urukai. So the only way to do that was to do it in a computer. And so we created a software called Massive, where each of the little computer people has its own brain. They have to walk and, and do their own thing and make their own choices. And it was funny, the very first test, we had like 30, 30 CGI people running it, is that ha half of them turned and ran, ran away. <laughs> they were actually the smart ones, <laughs> so we had to so we had to dumb dumb them down and tell them to stay fighting. Don't turn and run. Just so you don't know how the battle's going to turn out. No, no, no. You teach. So so if you've got orcs fighting elves, you've got the, these CGI orcs are taught how to fight like an orc. These CGI elves are taught how to fight like an elf. The, the weapons they use, the, the sort of styles they use. You're capturing the action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rather no, you, than like you are literally not it. in control of it. No, no. So you have these huge battle scenes where, they, where these horses, like in Return of the King, like 6,000 horses are plowing into this, into this field of orcs. And that render, renders for about three days. And we don't know what, what it's going to be like. And we, we wait and see what it's going to be. Because they're all, the horses, the, the riders, the orcs, they're all going to make their own mind up. You're baking a do. cake and you're not sure how it's going to no, turn no, out. No, to no, that actually. No. Well, is there, of all those things, <laughs> of all the, of the moments that you created in The Lord of the Rings, 
and and in the Hobbit, is there a scene that that you even after all these years of living with it, you go, you say to yourself, I'd like to go back and see that again. Well, I mean, I always get asked what, what, which is my favorite Lord of the Rings film, which you didn't ask because you're smarter than that. Mm -hmm. But what you asked what was my favorite scene, which is actually, which is what I think about. Like, I, I love the Mines of Moria sequence from the Fellowship, you know, when they go mm -hmm. in through the door and sure, sure. right the way through the, um, the, um, the bridge and Gandalf's death, I think. That, you, know, you know, I just like that, that mm -hmm. sequence. But a scene that I think captures a lot of the spirit and it was a sort of a, a late scene is that we were shooting two towers and it was introducing Gollum. Mm. And the key thing with Gollum, as most people know, know is that he's Schmeagel and he's Gollum and it's like a split. And they, but we hadn't got a scene where you really got the idea, oh, this guy's two people and he talks to So we, we knew that we needed it, but we had no time to shoot it. Um, so Fran wrote a scene where Sam and Frodo are, are, are asleep, so they so they can be just lump, lumps in the bed. We don't, don't even have to have Elijah and Sean, and a little set, and um, and didn't have anyone to direct it. So I said to Fran, "Well, you wrote it. You, you should you should go and shoot it." So she went in for a day, and she and she she wrote and directed the scene, which has become kind of um, yeah, pretty famous now. Yes, and that was that was a late thought because we just realised that we needed it to really sell the idea to the audience of, of who this guy is, and um, and Fran Fran wrote it and wrote and shot it with a tiny crew. I uh, recently sat down with Jacinda Ardern, your prime minister. Yes, and she revealed that she auditioned for the Lord of the Rings and didn't get a part. Is that awkward now when you run into her? Now, do you reckon she was telling the truth? Was it? She said. I mean, I have no reason to to no, doubt no, no, uh, the leader I, I, of I, your I, country. No, no. I, I, it's, it's, it wasn't. It wasn't a joke. Mm -hmm. We had her audition again. You did. Yeah. Would you like oh, to see her audition? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Here we go. If you want him, come and claim him. If you want him, come and claim him. Boom. Would you like to apologize? Peter, do the right thing. I thought it was great. Uh, Jacinda, and clearly 20 years ago, I made a terrible mistake. Okay, you're a big man mm. for such a small man. Thank you. When we return, my celebration of New Zealand continues, and I get to participate in a traditional Maori haka. It's amazing. I had bruises on my thighs for a week. <laughs> Count them for Trump a bum bum. That and which, by the way, people, you, I believe. Our new orange president, Trump a bum bum. We're going to do great things for business. There's no reason for them to leave anymore. He's going to drain the swamp, Trump a bum bum. Of ethics reforms to make our government honest. Refilled with crocodiles, Trump a bum bum. Trump a bum bum. Trump a bum bum. I'm going to bring jobs back from China. Perhaps he'll change his hair to rump a bum bum. Just perfect. I want it to be so beautiful. Such an odd clump. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Michael Bay will direct the action thriller Ambulance, and Jake Gyllenhaal has signed on to star. Although Bay plans to shoot Ambulance beginning in 2021, it already sucks. A once-in-a-lifetime event will take place December 21st when Jupiter and Saturn reunite after 800 years to form a rare Christmas star. Though to be fair, if you spend your Monday night sitting alone in a field, eagerly clutching a four-foot telescope, you probably didn't have too much of a life to begin with. The Backstreet Boys just got their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Coincidentally, it's located on the same side of the street that their careers sleep on. Four lions have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Barcelona Zoo. Question, who swabbed their throats to find this out? Time for Nobody Gives a Fuck. Some dude climbed out onto the wing of an airplane about to take off from Las Vegas airport. He was promptly arrested and charged with being the worst wingman ever. Hey, morons who should probably quit drinking. Nobody gives a f
New study says if you have complications after you return home from surgery, you stand a better chance of survival if you return to that same hospital rather than seek out a different one. That's because the original hospital will have a better idea of exactly which surgical instrument they left inside you. Hey, General Hospital, nobody gives a f***. And Steve Buscemi turned 63 yesterday. He tried to eat the whole birthday cake but couldn't finish it because his eyes are literally bigger than his stomach. Hey, Mr. Pink, nobody gives a f***. Thanks, everybody. We have a new episode of the Reynolds Report for you every weekday. Be sure to check out NSS Live starring Frank D'Angelo, Tuesdays and Thursdays for NSS Live.